Hey everybody, it's your pal Wes from Perfect Circuit, and we're back at it again. We can't be stopped. It's time for part four. Best year of the year, 2022 edition. We've got all our friends. It's like the crossover episode compilation, you know. It's like when Frasier and Friends and Cheers were all together. I'm going to shut up. Let's listen to these homies. Hey everyone, this is Trevarsi here, and yeah, this is pretty exciting to be here for the Perfect Circuit 2022 Pick of the Year. Thank you, Perfect Circuit, for inviting me to do this. Really made me think, because I'm constantly changing all the modules in my case all the time for performance, and I decided I wanted to go with the Kikane. It's been in my case since I got it. This is a 909-inspired kick module by Nobula. It's one knob per function, super easy to patch, quick to dial in, especially for those live performance situations. And yeah, it has accent, decay, even volts per octave. And my favorite, it has a reverb to make those rumble techno kicks. So yeah, let me show you some ways on how I like to patch it. All right, so I have my vector, which I'm going to use to sequence the cocaine. I'm going to... Now I'll add some accents since I already have the CV patched to my accent. And now it's going to get even more interesting because I'm going to send some to the decay. So I'm using another lane to trigger the decay input. But I can still tweak the knobs here. Simply sending that extra CV starts to add a little more character to the tone. So now let me jump over to a sequence that I have where it's sequencing the volts per octave. to bring out even more of textures. So now I'll just add this other percussion I have coming from the assimilator just to kind of just to give you context to what's happening. All right, now I'm going to jam for just a moment. Hey there, I'm Ben, and I suppose it's that time of the year again where Perfect Circuit asks us to round up all the little things that came out and declare the winners and losers. Before we get into all this boring audio gear stuff, we got to talk about what's important and rate it. Coca-Cola's fantasy flavors that they released in 2022. I'm not sure why they're called fantasy flavors because they do actually exist in stores, as I'm sure you know. Now, the winner of that genre would have to be Dream World. And I initially thought that Dream World would taste like throw up because it's kind of like a orange fruit punch mixed with cola thing, but it's really just like regular cola and then an explosion of flavor afterwards. It is a bit much, but I mean, these are fantasy flavors we're talking about. Number two on that list would be Starlight, which tastes like space. And according to Coca-Cola, space tastes like cola with a little bit of a burnt raspberry flavoring to it. It's not great. Number three would be Marshmallow, which I initially thought would be marshmallow flavored Coke. And I was kind of excited about that, but it turns out that there's a really famous musician named Marshmallow and it tastes nothing like marshmallows. It just tastes like fruity Coke. And that just pissed me off. Number four on that list 
aka the loser would be bite which is apparently inspired by gaming and according to coca-cola gaming tastes like sugary blood that's carbonated Moving on to synths. If I have to judge music gear, I like to quantify it down to some very simple metrics. How inspiring is it? How often am I using it? How much music am I making on it? And I suppose that anybody who follows my channel would not be surprised to see this poly and play being my winner. About once a year, I drive all the way across America and back the trip usually takes about three weeks and I only take one piece of music gear with me to make music the entire time. And this year I chose the Polyand Play and it delivered better than I could have ever imagined. That entire time I was generally only using the mode that plays sound files. I wasn't using the MIDI mode. When you bring it into my studio here, it becomes the best sequencer that I have. But in standalone mode, even with the poly end play being as different than anything else as it is, it did have some competition this year. This obviously has a lot more to do with how I make music and will vary from person to person, but I find that the limitations with the Op 1 field kind of stop me from making music as much on it, and the limitations on the poly end play are crafted in a way that makes me want to make music within those limitations. In the audio gear world, when we hear the word limitations, a lot of us think that it's a negative thing. But if it was a negative thing to have limitations, then why would we have all this stuff? We would just be making music on a big gaming computer. My pick last year was the Arturia Polybrute, and I couldn't really understand why I liked it so much given that it's kind of a limiting synth. But it's just that these particular devices intentionally make a really meaningful songwriting experience within those limitations. And even long after my honeymoon phase, I frequently still put on headphones and sit on my couch and lose track of time with the poly into play. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So that's the winner for me. Bye. Hello everyone, my name is Liam Killen, and thank you so much to Perfect Circuit for having me in this video. I'm here with the DigiTac, which I've been raving about for months now over on my channel. It's marketed as a drum machine, I think it's a lot more than that. It's a sampler, and so having access to those samples quickly, I think is a really important part of the workflow, and the DigiTac just has that down pat. I'm someone who believes that if the workflow of an instrument is solid, it just enhances the overall creative experience. There's just no blocks in the way. And of course, the newest Electron Box Edition is song mode, and that just increases the value of the DigiTact even more. Here's a pattern from a song that I put together using some of my own samples. Song mode really opens up the Electron boxes to an entirely new audience as well. So obviously if you're like an instrumentalist indie singer songwriter, maybe your hands are just completely occupied uh, by other parts, maybe an instrument, guitar, vocals. In that case, song mode does become very useful. It sends and receives MIDI so smoothly and just works hand in hand uh, with the PC12 workflow. So if I jump to a different pattern here, I have control over all the mutes and unmutes, for example. I could also control the filter for each instrument. So this is the flute. Maybe some reverb. And I even have control of master effects. So if I go over to delay, I can control the volume of said delay, the feedback as well. And what is this? The uh, high pass, low pass. Exact same thing with reverb. Volume high pass, low pass, and this is decay. I mean, I could literally just go on forever with this setup, but these are some standouts that I love about the DigiTact. Oh yeah, and the price is right. Hey everyone, it's your pal Red Stripe down here, and today I wanted to talk to you about a module that I've been really excited about, the Qubit Electronics Nautilus. It is a brand new stereo delay from them, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, let's take a look. So, Qubit describes Nautilus as a complex delay network inspired by subnautical communications and their interaction with the environment. Um, and I 
I guess rather than pontificate on that too much, uh, let's just listen to a bit of what it can do um, and uh, explore the module a bit. My name's Jameson, rhymes with whiskey, and I love the Moog Matriarch. Why do I love it so much, you didn't ask? Well, I'll tell you. I wanted this synthesizer the moment that Moog announced it and released that video called Space Time Continuum or something. You know, the one with all the plants and the incense and Lisa Belladonna and her tape machines. I just really wanted it. Well, a couple years went by, and earlier this year, I finally bought one. And since that time, I've gone on to make paraphonic arps. I've injected Eurorack oscillators directly into its veins to make massive drony things. I've created expansive ambient generative patches, patching it into itself. And as everyone has, I think at this point, I ran a massive pipe organ into its mixer and delayed the absolute out of it. Now I know what you may be thinking. One, this man may be a psychopath. And B, I didn't even realize Billy Bob Thornton was into synthesizers in the first place. I can't see. But more importantly than all of that, the Moog Matriarch is just an incredible synthesizer that I develop an immediate connection with the moment that I plug the thing in. Like any Moog that I've ever played, the limitations that it has felt really well thought out and intentional and like they put them there for a reason and they almost always lead me into a place that I would have never found on my own. And when you place it in front of even the most modest of Eurorack systems, it really opens things up and kind of melts away all of those limitations that it does have and creates a whole new world of possibilities. And also that delay is very, very good. Thank you Perfect Circuit for lending me your audience to tell them about my undying love for the Moog Matriarch and now I would like to send it over to someone who undoubtedly has many more subscribers than I do. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. It's Marianne Hedonia, and I'm coming to you from my studio with my pick for the best new gear of 2022. I picked my Oberheim OBX8 because I have always wanted a vintage Oberheim, but to get a vintage Oberheim is number one, really expensive, and number two, um, the upkeep and just kind of understanding how and where to get it serviced um, and where to get it from. It was just too much. So when Oberheim and uh, Tom Oberheim and Dave Smith announced that they were going to work together to create 
a new or original Overheim synth, I was ecstatic. So it was definitely something that I wanted from the moment that they announced it. And now that I have it playing around with it, I can really make these like terrifying drones. <laughs> most beautiful, sweet, vintage pad sounds. These really tight bass lines and also just like cinematic soundscapes. It's easy to make new sounds and there's also 400 presets on it if you're feeling not very creative, um, but it's a beautiful synth. There's multiple filter modes, there's multiple waveforms. Um, it's just overall like beautiful looking and beautiful feeling. And I'm really, really happy to have it as an addition to my studio. And I'm really happy to say that this is definitely, without a doubt, my favorite piece of gear from 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and play. Bye. Hi, I'm Minotrail, and I work a lot with modular synths. I love to explain how they work, use them in the studio and on stage. So for me, the favorite piece of gear I got in 2022 is the module that completely changed how I look at and use my modular system. It's called Droid and actually a lineup of Eurac modules. This module here is called the Droid Master and the brain of the lineup, so to say. This module has eight inputs here and eight outputs here to interact with the rest of your modular. And it's capable of performing basically any CV task imaginable. It can generate LFOs, envelopes and random voltages, do complex logic, CV recording, mixing, quantizing and clock duties, as well as creative pattern generation, melodic sequencing and a lot more. Other modules in the lineup, like this one, offer hardware control like pots and buttons. With the controllers, you can influence what's going on in the master. So a setup like this can be used to create a custom module with almost any feature you want, apart from audio duties. So I notice since I'm using Droid, I often look at other or new modules and think, hey, that's an interesting idea, but I can use Droid for that. For example, here I use it as eight variable wave shape LFOs with related frequencies. I can set the master frequency, dial in cross modulation and use the buttons to select the wave shapes for the LFOs. this setup, I made two groups of three cascading envelopes. They re-trigger each other and have mix outputs. I can use the buttons to select looping behavior and which group of envelopes is controlled with the paths. And here, I set it up as a simple quad trigger pattern generator along with mutes for the patterns and a simple way to add pattern variations. I will be honest, this system is not for everyone. Of course, with all the things it can do, you need to give it detailed instructions. And for that, you need to use an application on your laptop. But it's a very user-friendly interface and no programming language is needed. When you are the type of person who's not afraid of some creative thinking, you can push the possibilities really far. Droid can not just perform many different tasks, it can perform a lot of them at the same time. So with a few controllers, you can create an entire custom control surface. For example, in this setup, I use it to create multiple Euclidean-based patterns with hands-on control. 
along with a sequencer for a baseline, mutes for all the voices, envelopes and LFOs for modulation, and so on. And here it's driving a kick, a semi-random percussive pattern, as well as a bass line and generative lead melody. Again, with mutes, lots of modulation and ways to create pattern variations and evolving melodies during performances. Thank you. 